The Legend of Zelda The Ocarina of Time A video game that is viewed by many to be one of the greatest video games of all time. With memorable locations, and great boss battles to name a couple of things. I remember playing this game as a kid and having a ton of fun with it, but does it still hold up today? Let's take a look. In this game, we experience the story from the perspective of the game's main protagonist, Link. At the beginning of the game, he has spent most of his life in Kokiri Village living amongst the other Kokiris. However, once he is found by a fairy named Navi, he goes on a series of adventures that takes him outside of Kokiri Village and into the land of Hyrule. Later on, he becomes an adult and realizes he's not actually from Kokiri Forest, but instead from Hyrule. Eventually, he faces off against the evil Gandorf, who took over Hyrule and has been basically a dictator to the entire country. The general story in this game is actually pretty similar to other Zelda games. Link has to go on an adventure and stop the bad guy and comes across various temples along the way. But one of the things that made this game very unique for its time was all the memorable characters you came across while on the journey. So many characters have stood the test of time for them in this game regardless of their role and their importance. Whether it be a temple boss such as Twin Rova, to supporting characters such as Milan, to even Link's horse, Epona. Epona has actually become an icon in the Zelda universe since this game. She has been used in many other Zelda games since Ocarina of Time, such as Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, Hyrule Warriors, and she would be added to Breath of the Wild due to popular demand. While most of the characters are very beloved in this game, there are a few that are controversial and some that are flat out hated. Princess Ruto is one of the more debated characters in this game. Some people think that her crush on Link is sweet and she has a nice charm to her. While others think she is flat out annoying and entitled. Now for Link's fairy Navi, there is no debate at all. Everyone who has played this game, including myself, believes that she is annoying and talks too much. And the same thing goes for that annoying Al, too. Which leads into this game's major flaw with its story, and that's the amount of dialogue it has. While most of the dialogue does a good job of moving the story forward, there are also times where it grinds to a very slow pace. I mean, for goodness sakes, how much backstory do we need on the creation of Hyrule and on the goddesses? Also, this particular cutscene is shown much more often in the game than it needs to be. This created moments where I just want to skip the dialogue altogether and get to the next section of the game. Fortunately though, it doesn't do it too much enough to where I get annoyed and want to stop the game altogether. Overall though, this game's story is pretty good. I do like the majority of the characters and I'm glad to see that many of them have popped up in either other Zelda games or Nintendo games altogether. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. As far as action adventure games go, this game is able to capture the best of both worlds. The overall map of this game is actually pretty good size, especially by that time period standards. There are a lot of places you can explore in this game, and if you pay attention, there are also a ton of secrets you can find as well. Mainly with the holes, some you can use bombs, some you can use a certain song to unlock but never take where you're staying for granted. There are also some really cool easter eggs such as this picture of Mario and Peach you can see here. The combat in this game is pretty fun and challenging. There's a good variety of bosses and enemies in this game that are pretty challenging to fight and some of them you have to fight a certain way. You have a pretty good assortment and tools and weapons to use throughout the game. Some of these items you can win in games or buy in shops, others you will have to go through certain temples and dungeons to get them. Speaking of temples and dungeons, this game has a lot of them and they're all unique in their own way. My personal favorite is a temple called the Spirit Temple, which has a very Egyptian-like theme to it. The temple has a lot of very cool visuals and aesthetics that you see throughout. The lighting in this temple is spot on and all the architecture that you see throughout the temple is very well executed. 
The mini boss battles with the iron knuckles are also very fun and very challenging. The theme song for this temple is also very cool as well, but I'll talk more about that later. Like most people though, my least favorite temple in this game is without doubt the water temple. This temple is so convoluted that trying to navigate it is a huge pain in the butt. There are basically three levels in the temple where you have to raise and lower the water level accordingly. However, to do that right, there are so many different rooms you have to explore and navigate and it's very easy to miss something. In most of the other temples in this game, if you have to go back somewhere because you missed a key or a switch, you usually have a pretty good idea where you went wrong. But if you have to do that in this temple, the temple is so vast that you don't even know where to start. There are also a lot of very annoying obstacles in this temple that you have to overcome. I mean, look at this obstacle. It's not hard, but it's time consuming and it's like, do they really have to add it? The one saving grace in this temple is the epic mini boss battle with Dark Link. I remember the very first time I fought Dark Link, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time and I remember how accomplished it felt when I finally defeated him. As far as bosses go in this game, I would have to say my favorite boss to fight was Beast Ganon. Not only was he a tough boss, but the atmosphere they set him in is very uneasy. I personally think that this is one of the scariest Ganon boss battles in all of Zelda history. One of the main reasons for that is just look at the background that you're fighting him in. It's very dark and only gets lit up by brief moments of lightning, so all you see for the most part is this giant silhouette. And because you really don't see that much of him, all you can really look at is the eyes. Which on its own doesn't sound that scary, but let me explain. Beast Scan is nothing new to the Zelda series and there have been different versions of him. But one thing that most of them have in common is that the battles take place in more brightly lit areas, so he doesn't look as menacing or feel as menacing. On top of that, a lot of these battles take place in more tamed areas that don't scream the sort of boss battle you would expect from a beast like Ganon. But look at the battlefield for Ocarina of Time. The rubble, the fire, the lightning, the darkness, it creates a very horrifying battlefield. And when the only noticeable feature of the monster is the eyes, it makes him that much more terrifying. Aside from the water temple, the game is a ton of fun to play, even by today's standards, and I still have fun playing it. But we can't talk about Ocarina of Time without mentioning the music. The soundtrack for this game is absolutely brilliant and very well done. Every song on this soundtrack is great, and on its own it would make for a great musical album. There are so many great songs like Song of Storms that have become classic Zelda songs and are still popular today. Not only are the songs really good, but they're also very well placed throughout the game. For example, there is a music that's playing while you're going through the courtyard at Hyrule Castle. The music fits the tone very well and it works very well with the gameplay as well. You end up having a much more fun experience because of it. The developers also knew to use the big epic sounding songs for world exploration and for dungeons they kept in more ambiance. Here's the theme for the Hyrule Field. That music is very great to get you in the mood to explore the Hyrule Field and see what it has to offer. However, big epic music like that can be distracting for a temple, so they decided to go with more ambiance, atmospheric music. For example, here's the theme to my favorite temple, the Spirit Temple. The music fits the tone of the temple perfectly, it matches the Egyptian feel of the temple, but it's not so over the top and so loud that it distracts from exploration and gain through it as well. All the ocarina based songs in this game too are very cool as well, they have a nice melody to them and are very soothing. 
A lot of people have Ocarina of Time in their top 20 video game soundtracks, and it's easy to see why. The songs are good, and they are very well placed in the game. Even though it's been decades since Ocarina of Time was released, it still holds up very well today. The world is still a pretty good size and it's fun to explore. The dungeons and temples are a lot of fun and they would lay the groundwork for a lot of games in the future. And the music in this game is so good that it would be great on its own even without this game. I still enjoy this game a lot even though it's very old and I recommend that you check it out as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, give this video a thumbs up if you like this video, and comment below, let me know what you think of this game. And if you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. And if you would like to support the channel and help it grow, you can do one-time donations through PayPal or Venmo, or become a patron on Patreon, links to all three will be in the description below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, have a nice day.